So My Hero Academia Chapter 293 is out and while it wasn't full of plot twists and turns and other words for plot twists, it was still chock full of new reveals and wild events that make my weeb heart beat that bit strong. But before I begin, I have to warn you that there is major manga spoilers ahead and if you're not up to date, you should probably click away now. Okay, so in the last chapter, we had the reintroduction of the number 3 hero, Best Genist, who was originally introduced as the number 4 hero, thank you comment section for correcting me. And with his glorious arrival to the battlefield, he quickly restrained the remaining members of the League of Villains. While this is going on, Dobby and Shoto have been kicking their sibling rivalry to the next level by battling it out with their flames. Dobby reveals that his desire to make Endeavor suffer is so powerful that even the thought of murdering Shoto brings a smile to his face. Older brother of the year? Question mark? In the midst of this conflict, Nedre gets caught in a crossfire and put out of commission. Shigaraki shows a sliver of consciousness and commands Gigantomachia to rage, putting serious stress on Best Genus's quirk, and with a group of Nomus underway to confront Best Genus and divert his focus, all hope seems lost. But seemingly from out of nowhere, the hero known as Lemillion arrives in the nick of time with his quirk that was originally taken away in one of the most emotional and inspiring moments in the entire series. And this is where the chapter picks up. It opens up with Lemillion arriving on the battlefield, explaining how exactly he got his quirk back. Apparently, Mirio has been watching Eri steadily grow and gain mastery of her quirk over the past few months, by practicing using it on lizards and insects. Mirio requested that before the hero's raid on the villains, that Eri should attempt to use her quirk on him. It's a nice little moment where Mirio apologizes to Eri immediately, saying he doesn't want it to seem like he's just using her. But Eri, being the most adorable little thing on the planet, lifts up Mirio's face and smiles, saying not to apologize and that this is exactly what she's been training for. Ah, she's such a little cutie. And then it's implied Eri succeeded and Mirio finally got his groove, I mean, I mean his quirk back. Now Mirio's return apparently upset a lot of fans with them stating it ruins his character. Personally, it doesn't bother me. In fact, I quite enjoyed seeing Mirio return. I got so damn hyped. He's an amazing character and I've always wanted to see more of him. But if you're worried this ruins his character, there could actually be a possible solution. Eri is still extremely young and obviously hasn't fully mastered her quirk yet. So although it's never been stated before, this could be what I like to call a temporary reversion. What if she could only rewind him back to a short time before he lost his quirk, allowing him to use it, but eventually his body would catch up to the point where he lost it and his body would revert back to his quirkless state. This would mean that Lemillion's power is on a time limit and after the time is up, he has to return to Eri to revert him back again. This would have severe weakness to Mirio and give reason for him to help out in this fight, but not to return to normal hero work. But again, I don't really care. This character's amazing and he should have got one for all. But back to the chapter. Mirio arrives on the scene being his heroic self and temporarily stops the Nomus attacking Best Genist. But even with his quirk back, he still doesn't have enough strength to knock out the Nomus in one hit. And so, he makes a call for backup. Bakugo, hearing this call for help, becomes inspired, thinking back to the explosions he made to save Deku from Shigaraki. He realizes that the explosions he used to propel himself through the air in that situation were faster and more powerful than his usual explosions, even though he was on the brink of death. He realizes that it was because of a sensation he'd never felt in his body before, the genuine desire to save someone. And hearing Mirio call out for help reignites this desire and Bakugo swiftly blasts into aid Mirio, accompanied by Ida and Nedra. This moment is a great insight into Bakugo's development as a character. For the first time ever, Bakugo's main driving force in combat is not to win, but to save. And it's not just to save people because he has to, but because he genuinely wants to. As a massive Bakugo fan, which you could probably have figured out from my Bakugo the Unexpected Hero video, this moment hits that spot. When this comes along in the anime, you know there's gonna be videos galore about this moment. It's gonna be insane. And as Bakko flies in accompanied by a hurt but still fighting Nejire and a surprised Ida, Best Genius and Bakko have a nice student-mentor interaction in which Bakko finally reveals his hero name. God of Explosive Destruction, Dynamite. I love this name. Not only do you get the explosion pun in there, but you also get the homage to the former symbol of peace with might being spelled M-I-G-H-T rather than M-I-T-E. It's perfect! All hail God Dynamite! But in typical Horikoshi humor, everyone else in the fight thinks the name is stupid for one reason or another. Except for Mirio, 
who finds it funny. Bakugo gets angry at Mirio, but in a heartwarming moment, Mirio apologizes, stating that his hero motto is, without joy and laughter to balance the sorrow, this world can never hope to have a bright future. And if this sounds familiar, it's because these were actually Sir Nighteye's final words before he drew his last breath. Sir Nighteye may be gone, but the future he worked so hard to build is finally being forged through Lemillion, the man who will become a great hero. And after that heart-wrenching moment, it cuts back to Dobby and Shoto's fight, where Dobby does Dobby things and taunts both Shoto and Endeavor, all while trying to burn Shoto alive in front of Endeavor's eyes. But before he can, Midoriya interrupts the battle using the quirk Black Whip, but since he can't move his arms or legs, he shoots the whip from his mouth, imitating Froppy's extended tongue. Dobby blasts Midori with his flames, demanding he stay out of family affairs. But Midori retorts, exclaiming that he's fighting not only because Todoroki is one of his closest friends, but also because Endeavor is his mentor, a person that helped him become stronger. He states that the past doesn't just disappear, and that's exactly why he's watching Endeavor, because he's watching the man who is actively trying to change. Hearing this, along with Midori telling Dobby, you were not Endeavor, Endeavor Endeavor shoots into the sky and blasts into Gigantomachia, who has just broken free from best genus restraints. Endeavor has been pushed far beyond his limits with this attack, however, with the last shot we see of him is with a blackened and extremely bloodied face. It's unclear whether he is conscious or even alive, but his attack isn't in vain as a stressed Gigantomachia falls and struggles to get back up. And finally, the chapter concludes with Mirio explaining that the anesthetic class 1A had given the Gigantomachia while initially not working, was in fact, successful in slowing down the beast. And thus, the chapter ends with this new hope. From the looks of everything, it really seems like this arc is coming to its final stages. The only League member still fighting with Spirit is Dobby, and even he has his limits. More heroes have arrived on the scene, and they've countered every single thing the villains have thrown at them. Although it seemed like the arc was coming to a close multiple times before, it really feels like they're leading into its last legs, considering many of the characters are also on their last legs. But who knows? With Toga nowhere to be seen, Dobby having the time of his life, and the rest of the League just one restraint away from being let loose, who knows what will happen next? Will the heroes win, or will the villains have a counter tactic of their own? If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.